I'm going to be playing about with some jewel forms. Um, I've had these in my drawer for about six years <laughs> and never tried them. So I thought I'd give them a go. I'm going to try them using acrylic and see how that goes and you'll I'll take you on the journey. I do two attempts in this video. So this first one is my first attempt and I'm just sizing up these jewel forms. Now I know that they need to be bigger than the nail to make space for whatever you're using, whatever medium you're using, whether it's acrylic or gel or poly gel. So um oh that's oh this is my SBD London Oval 14 brush that I'm using with the acrylic. Um so yeah, the, the, it has to be larger. So when you look at, you size them up, you look at it from side wall to side wall, it actually has to be larger so that when you push down and push the product onto the nail, it's big enough. It's really hard to describe. Just know that you don't want it to fit exactly. You want it to be bigger. And you'll see as I go along, I thought I had picked out the right sizes. And you'll see as I go along, as I push them on. So I filled, you know, filled it with, with acrylic. And I'm pushing it on. And I'm thinking, no, that's not big enough. Because did you see where I turned it to the side? It wasn't meeting the side wall properly. I know... The principle's the same what, no matter what medium you're using, but it's a bit more awkward when you're using something that needs to be cured. So I wouldn't be able to do this on myself, I don't think, if um, I needed to hold it and then hold the lamp. I don't know. Never tried it. So I thought, I tried my first attempt with acrylic. It's the thing I'm most comfortable with. And immediately, as soon as you fit it on, you can see it's just not big enough. Why I carried on, I don't know. I <laughs> carried on doing all the nails, even though I could see that it was not fitting. It was too small. I needed to go up a, another size. So, yeah. Uh, watch me faff. Oh, look at that. I've got the acrylic stuck to my glove. If you notice, the way I was doing it was I was doing the tip of the filling the tip with acrylic first then doing the nail bed area so that the tip had time to dry and, and solidify a bit before I get to push it on the nail and that way hopefully it doesn't sort of squish out underneath and make a big mess that needs filing away but yeah I'm just filling it with the acrylic and you can see how much acrylic I'm putting in not putting a huge amount in because you don't need a lot with these with these dual forms. That's it. Put it on. Swipe away any spillage, and you can see it's just not fitting the nail. So wait for that to harden, and then I'll remove. I'll wiggle, pinch it, wiggle it, and remove the dual form. And they come off really cleanly. But um, I'll show you in a sec when I turn it to the side. Oh no, I'm not showing it yet. I will though. So, file it in. Try and make the best of it. But I'll, I'll file it in and see how it looks after I filed it in. Not a great deal of filing to do. That's the, you know, the beauty of dual forms. They are they are quick to use, but it's getting them right. I, it squidged out a bit near the cuticle area, so I had to file that down. And then the top surface, you just want to file that a little bit so that your gel polish has got something to stick to. I'm just using a sanding band. Ah, there you go. Did you see that from the side? I've got that dip area where it's just totally missing. It's not coming straight out from the side wall. 
it's missing acrylic and that's because the size I was using was too small so it's it's trial and error don't just do a whole set knowing it's too small like what I did for goodness sake <laughs> I'm showing you how things look when it's done wrong and this was how I did it wrong but if you don't try it you don't know so I gave it a go and now I know what I what I need to do but yeah I had to give it a go and try and file it and see if see if it looked any better after I filed and yeah no it didn't it really didn't so at this point I'm like do I really want to carry on I know that there's they just it's wrong I can tell the structure of the nail is just wrong it's not coming out from the sidewall area and um, the more and more I look at it the more I think I can't fix this there's no way to fix this it's impossible so here we go I'm showing you from the side now it's not coming straight out from the side walls there's bits missing sorry about the sunshine shining in kind of not blinding a bit but yeah not good so <laughs> round two this time I'm sizing up I'm trying to show you not easy to show I must say on camera um, I'm just this time filing the oh, what's it called the cuticle area a little bit so that it fits because they're kind of squarish so I just sort of round them off a bit so that they fit nicer into the cuticle area and as you can see I'm sizing it up and I'm like yeah it's got to be you've got to have space right the way around the sides it's really got to overlap the nail quite a bit for it to be big enough so that once you put the product in that it fits up right along the side walls properly so yeah I'm just shaping the cuticle area so that it fits in nicely now I can see that fits in nicely I've sized them all up I didn't think you know, no point showing you sizing up again you know showed you the one let's not carry it on too much so same again using acrylic because that's the medium I am most comfortable with next time I'm actually going to do a tutorial using poly gel so keep an eye out for that and I'll be going much more in depth of how to size it up and stuff this video is more for me to have a play and give it a go it's not a full tutorial as such, but I will have that one coming up very soon for you guys. There's a few people that have been asking for a dual forms um, tutorial. So yeah, in the next video that's dual forms, I will go into more detail and I will use, like I said, the poly gel. That's what most people are using with the dual forms. So, as you can see, fill the form, dual form with the acrylic, push it down gently, not too difficult. And you see how much better that fits around to the side walls. So much better. I'm just removing any that's squished out near the cuticle area. So, again, I do the tip first because then that has time to start setting up a little bit. And then I'll do the nail bed area and I'm making it quite thin towards the cuticle quite thin indeed and then gently hold it on at the cuticle and sort of push towards the free edge and remove any that squishes out now you're not needing to press hard or anything press really gently until you can feel it's secured to the nail. I'm just trying to remove these bits that are squished out because I don't want it to stay there. Making sure it's really attached. Same again, fill the tip area first and then the body. I do also let it sit for a couple of seconds before I put it on the uh, nail. Again, use my brush, remove any that squishes out. 
and don't push too hard especially on the free edge area because then it will squish out underneath and it, it looks just this mess and you don't want that so they have set so i just pinch the tip twist and wiggle and it pops right off now you can see the difference with this one and oh that one's not ready karen leave it alone it's not ready oh good lord i'm terrible squished the bottom of it the tip of it so i'm just trying to fix it right so i'm going to file these ones in side wall side wall get rid of any that's overflowed the side wall free edge again side wall side wall because this is a hundred grit file so i don't want to use that around the cuticle area side wall side wall free edge same on every nail you can see the difference in the side where it's coming out of the sides properly now there's no sort of arrow dip just filing away the overspill that was on that side wall that happen with that free edge take that one off it's dried hardened enough file away the side walls again as usual make sure it's coming the acrylic is coming straight out from the side wall bit of overspill on that one Let's just get rid of that now I will use a finer grit file to go around the cuticle area and then I decided to change to my e-file. I always go in with the hand file first and then remember I own an e-file. I don't know why I do it, but I literally do it every time. It's terrible. The uh, memory of a flea. <laughs> it's like, I'm Dory. I'm Dory. That's, that's all there is to it. I'm just using this small e-file bit which is really handy for getting around the cuticle area. I can't even remember where I got it from. I've had it years. And it still works. It's great. Because <laughs> it's not as sharp as it once was, it's really good for getting around the cuticle area without removing too much. cuticle area was a bit neater this time wasn't quite as much to file away I didn't because I'd cleaned up with the brush it wasn't quite as bad but if you look from the sides I still could have gone a little bit bigger on some of the nails there is a little bit little bit of a sort of cut into on the side walls just a little bit so I could have gone up slightly larger on the old dual forms but again like I say unless until you give it a try and give all the different you know sizes a try you won't know which ones work and how big it needs to be for each nail so yeah size them up as best you can without product in it and once you've put the product on that's when you'll know if it fits or not so maybe if you're doing them on yourself use nail guards or something so that you can peel it back off whilst you're experimenting on it and it's experimenting on hand dolly is obviously easy for me because yeah I use nail guards on this particular hand dolly and on, a, on the other ones they're sliding tips so it's easy to uh, switch them out and um, try a different size but I would say yeah if you're doing it on yourself definitely use a peel off base or nail guards or something that will help that will enable you to take the nails off if they're the wrong size until you get used to knowing how much bigger the dual form needs to be definitely do that I mean, once you know, then you you know you can do your nail prep as as normal and uh, keep them on. I'm 
just buffing the surface a bit. Take away the shine so that I can paint them. And I'm just cleaning up a little bit underneath. There was a little bit of a squish out from underneath. And even though this is only on hand dolly, it this would bug the crap out of me if this was on my own hands. So I'm removing it because we're treating hand dolly like she's real as usual. If this was a client, yeah, I would certainly clean underneath for sure. And definitely on myself as well. Because yeah, when you've got that kind of bits under your nail, it's really annoying and you just end up picking it. And that's the last thing you want to have to do or something annoying under your nails. So clean that up, dust off. Now I've wiped the nails down with a lint-free wipe and rubbing alcohol. And now it's time to paint them and make them pretty. So I'm going for a really, really bright pink and um, a cow print design. It's, um, yeah, I've not actually done a cow print design before. And I thought I'd, I'd have a go. I'm not the best skilled at drawing by any means but this is something that even I can draw because <laughs> it's just blobs <laughs> so yeah I'll paint them all this very bright pink on the middle finger I'm doing a French that's why I've skipped it cure that That way when I'm doing the French design I don't end up um, putting my fingers in the old uh, gel polish on the other fingers. God, my brain is really slow today. I'm sorry for all the ers and the ums. So, as you can see, I'm using some old gel polishes that I had for I'll just get them used up. Regretted it. Regretted it. This white and, and black are just useless for drawing really do need to get myself some proper drawing, drawing gels because these gel polishes were not good but I do switch to SBD London and it was much better pigmentation wise definitely and te texture consistency consistency wise the SBD London ones are quite good for drawing even though they're not drawing gels so anyway two layers of this bright bright pink I can't recommend these ones I'm afraid but like I said check out SBD London there are loads of colours to choose from so full cure 60 seconds go on to the French I'm just using a stipe uh, stipe <laughs> a long striping brush to go from the side wall area down in a diagonal a diagonal stroke and then round it off in the middle and fill in with the brush from the bottle. This is the easiest way for me to do it. Some people could do it straight from the with the brush from the bottle, but I like to use a striping brush. I have better accuracy then especially with my shaky hand you wanted it quite deep so you want a deep smile line it's hard to get without get that deep without getting it on the skin so yeah use a striping brush definitely so like second layer I'm going over the edge with the striping brush again It's not squaring it off, it's rounding it off in the middle. And once I've filled in those bits, I will use the brush from the bottle. Carry on filling the rest of it in. Thin layers, as usual, with gel polish. Missed a bit there, so I was just going to use a striking brush. Go. 
secured that and oh yeah I'm um, filing the side walls a bit because I lost a bit of my shape so just gave that side wall just a little bit of a file get rid of the dust with a bit of rubbing alcohol and a lint free wipe going to do the cow print design so I'm literally just doing waves with the brush from the bottle just blobs of white for my cow print and you can see this white is really it's not giving me great coverage not happy with it. I will switch at some point. I hope you can't hear my stomach from <laughs> It is bucketing down the rain today. And the wind. Oh my gosh, it's so windy. It's like proper winter. It's only the what? Second? Yes. Of October today, and wow, what a difference it kind of makes to the world. Wow, yeah, I, I, I'm missing the sun already for sure. But I will let you carry on watching as I do my cow print. It doesn't really need explaining because it's pretty self explanatory, it's nothing complicated because I can't do things that are complicated. <laughs> so, yeah. If it's easy, I can do it. If it's not, no chance. Not, no. I don't have great artistic abilities with my hands, I'm afraid. So, yeah, this is where I switched to using the SPD London blacks and whites because those other ones were crap. And you'll see how different it is. The coverage, so much better. Oh my goodness, look at the difference. So yeah, I'm just going to go over everything and uh, then do the black part and whatnot. So yeah, I will let you watch this in peace because you don't need me to explain that. And I will see you towards the end. Well, I won't see you. I'll speak to you again <laughs> towards the end.
I've done all the designing and cured it all so now it's time for some crystals and this SPD London diamond glue pen, gel pen is wonderful for crystals it's great for accuracy it does have a brush on it as well as the nib so yeah very good and it's very good at holding the crystals on which is what we want and you can move them around until you cure them in the lamp which is awesome I'll just posi position them where I want them and then I will cure them in place we cure that for 60 seconds or you could park your because you've done a top coating anyway but yeah and then top coat around the crystals not over them otherwise they lose their, their facets and they don't sparkle as much even though these aren't Swarovskis because I can't afford them so but still you still want them to sparkle as much as they can so yeah I avoid top coat on them and there we have it so that's the finished set um, I've got some video footage and photos at the end as usual so thank you ever so much for joining me I hope you'll come back again and if you're not subscribed please do so click the like button leave a comment all of that jazz that's all I've got for today peeps so take care now and I'll speak to you all again soon bye for now